So, welcome back. It's been uh, it's been a couple of months since the last episode. Welcome back to season seven of Coffee Break. No need to adjust your connection or look at your calendar. Yes, I am back in the Master of Ceremony seats for this afternoon or this morning. But uh, but just for this, it's a cameo appearance. But I'm happy to be back. Uh, happy to see that the Coffee Break is continuing. We're still investigating those topics of. Uh, interest that uh, all of you uh, tune in to find out what's going on at microchip so welcome welcome happy also to see that there's still coffee available so uh, hope everybody's got their cup ready to go I am joined today uh, by Ross Satchel from our MCU 8 uh, morning, business Russ. unit thank you uh, thanks to have you with us and uh, we're gonna be talking about 8-bit microcontrollers today and I will point out before we get going um, the socks can you zoom in on those those are those are awesome those are true engineer <laughs> socks. So uh, um, we, we'll, we'll be selling those online sometime soon, <laughs> I hope. But uh, uh, glad to see you're in the spirit of things. So welcome, welcome. Also uh, today, uh, new behind the booth or behind the glass in the booth is Aliyah Fajut, our new uh, master of ceremonies or our, our keyboard wizard. So Aliyah, welcome. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you, Ross? Good. Thank you for joining us this morning. Um, we are live on YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn, and you can leave your questions and comments at, um, in the chat and email us at livestream at microchip.com. And be sure to follow us on LinkedIn and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank right. you. Thanks, Aliyah. Glad to have you with us. So I've been with Microchip, Ross, I've been with Microchip a little over 10 years. And one of the enduring themes is the imminent demise of the 8-bit microcontroller. Uh, every year, next year is gonna be the last year, and, that, and, and yet, that's A, not true, not even close to true, um, and more to the point, there seems to be a tremendous amount of innovation going on. So can you give us kind of an overview of what the state of the market is today, where things are going, and what the big issues are uh, that we're driving with 8-bit controllers? Sure, so people have been saying for at least 10 years that 8-bit is going away. But the truth is 8-bit is now more popular than ever. And as the embedded market matures and continues to grow, the applications that used to be fully analog are now becoming smart systems. And because our PIC and AVR MCUs have a combination of core independent peripherals as well as on-chip analog, this is perfectly suited to these growing markets. And uh, since our competitors have been vacating the smaller memory and also lower pin count portion of the market, we've been picking up that slack for those customers. And as a result, we're seeing an increase in demand for 8-bit in that space. So when users consider the wide array of core independent peripherals, coupled with the growing range of integrated analog peripherals, as well as the easy, easy to use MCC Melody graphical uh, peripheral setup and driver generation tool, it's really easy to see why 8-bit is stronger than ever. And also now, some machine learning is now possible on an 8-bit, which was previously only possible on 32-bit MCUs. So let's, you know, one of the core precepts of microchip is smart, smart, connected, secure. We talk a lot about those dimensions of products. So smart is obviously at the, at the heart of microcontrollers. Talk a little bit about what we mean by smarter than ever. Sure. So when I say smarter, what this means is that we have a heavy focus on integration between digital and analog peripherals. And so this simplifies your project and also reduces the bill of material or bomb cost. And then to reduce your development time, we have MCC Melody. So you can create drivers and example code, which means that you can focus on your application code. And this all means that it allows you to get your product to market in less time. And then we also have improved low power operation, as well as the ability to respond to system changes as they happen. 
So, in particular, the analog dimension of these is, you know, my, my understanding is there's, there's just a ton more analog that's being integrated into these parts. How does that help and, and, and what are we, what, how are we communicating that out to our customers? Sure. So, these are real analog devices on the die. And so, you can configure them just like you would any other peripheral. But where these analog peripherals really shine is that you can dynamically configure them or reconfigure them during runtime. And that's something you simply cannot do with discrete analog devices. And also, since they're integrated on the MCU die, they're easily interconnectable with other peripherals using MCC Melody. So in addition to uh, the functionality, so this is all of the new um, analog capabilities. And you know, if I go back 10 years, you know, there was almost none on, on board a microcontroller. You had to have all kinds of discrete now. Now it's all inboarded. But, but there's more to it than just the intelligence or the smart. There's, you know, a lot of these uh, parts go into applications that are industrially challenging. There are severe uh, uh, environments. They're harsh environments. What have we done around that to improve the parts? So all of our PIC and AVR MCUs offer a wide VDD operating voltage from 1.8 to 5.5 volts. And so the user can decide to use the lowest voltage if they want to save power, or if their application is in an environment with a lot of electrical noise, they can use that higher VDD to pull all of those signals out of the noise. And then some of our PIC and AVR MCUs also offer an extended operating temperature range of up to 125 degrees Celsius. All of our recent MCUs uh, have individual GPIO pins able to uh, source or sync up to 50 milliamps. And then with low power applications, the users can leverage CCL, that's configurable custom logic. And it makes uh, able, you able to make decisions without needing to wake the CPU up until it's actually necessary. We also have MVIO, which is multi-voltage IO, where the user can employ sensors with two different voltage domains without increasing your bill of material or bomb cost and, and without any of the uh, problems associated with using level shifting hardware, such as propagation delay and noise. And MVIO is able to operate on all of your uh, old uh, normal signals as well, such as your PWM, your serial, and of course your G, uh, GPIO pins. So one of the particular areas around harsh environments or, or difficult uh, wor working environments is the whole notion behind uh, functional safety. Sure. Right? Automotive applications, industrial applications, uh, 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 white goods, those kinds of things. What, what, what do we offer there? Okay, so our 8-bits feature heavily in those big three areas that you just mentioned. So we have uh, household appliances, uh, automotive, and industrial applications. And so we have FMEDA, which is Failure Modes, Effects, and Diagnostic Analysis. And so this demonstrates the product diagnostics as they relate to functionality and failure modes. So what this means is what the effect, uh, the, what the effect a component failure has to the product functionality. And so we have three packages available. So the first one uh, is the basic package uh, where you get FMEDA and a safety manual. And the safety manual uh, defines various diagnostic mechanisms and also provides recommendations on uh, use of the device. Then the, the second one is the starter package, which has everything in the basic package, plus also the diagnostic software library. And then we have the full package. Uh, so that has everything in the starter package, plus all of the certificate generation. And so that shows the auditor all the documentation and libraries that have been used. And this streamlines the entire process. And so some of the tools offered are MPLAB XC8 Functional Safety Pro Compiler, MPLAB Code Coverage, and MPLAB Analysis Tool Suite. And this uh, enables static code analysis. So the bottom line here is that microchip safety packages and safety quality tools gives you everything you need to get your functional safety application up and running. And it looks like uh, there's a URL there that there's a lot more information uh, on, online for this product line and all of our functional safety activities. So uh, go give that a look. So with microcontrollers, it's always uh, you know half the game is the part, half the game is the tools. So what kind of uh, what kind of tools and what what break what innovations in the tool set do we have for okay. these products? So we have MCC Melody, which makes working with microchips array of peripherals much easier. It gives users a high level view of the features of the device they're working with, and it also greatly reduces the amount of time that users spend studying data sheets and writing bare metal drivers by instead giving users uh, an easy to use GUI where you can set up peripherals and also allows quick and easy evaluation of new peripherals. 
and MCC Melody can generate code that you can include in production or you can just use it as a reference if you want to write your own drivers. And then finally, you know, one of the ways that people always save time, save effort, and we can help them is in code examples and uh, uh, other uh, software packages that they can download to use. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. So we have MPLAB Discover, which is a search tool which has thousands of code examples, projects, and videos. And users can download examples for MPLAB X IDE or MPLAB Express cloud-based IDE. And there's multiple ways to search and filter the results, including the application segment, the functionality, the device, the particular peripheral, or the feature that you're looking for. All right. Well, that's a great tour. I mean, it, it's obvious that 8-bit uh, that is not dead. It's obvious that 8-bit will uh, continue, and we are continuing to innovate. I know that there's, you know, there's a, a pipeline of products coming uh, with all kinds of features with embedded analog and I/O and, and all. So, so you know, do do be aware that uh, that 8-bit is viable. 8-bit's important, uh, and 8-bit ought to be part of your uh, your design portfolio because there's all kinds of great stuff that it can do to to offload the the, the main compiler or the, the main uh, microcontroller or to, to just do functions in and of themselves. So that's great. Uh, Leah, do we have any questions coming from, uh, from the world? Um, our audience is actually quiet today, but um, I do have one question. Can the analog peripherals operate in low power mode? So depending on the analog peripheral, uh, that, that will determine which sleep modes are available. So I'd recommend to consult the MCU, MCU data sheet for the specifics on the individual analog peripheral and also the sleep modes that are available for that peripheral. Um, and where do I find specifications for the analog on these devices? Okay, so good question. Every data sheet has an operational specifications, which is in the electrical specs section at the back of the data sheet, along with any relevant AC specs, DC specs, and also waveforms, if that's applicable to that um, uh, peripheral. And um, when would I choose a standalone op amp over an integrated one? That's a very good question. So this is a, a matter of choosing the right tool for the, the job at hand. So uh, I would recommend to use a standalone op amp if you need superior analog performance or if you need a dual supply uh, voltage. Uh, and you can consult the back of the data sheet in the section of DC and AC characteristics. And this it can help you determine whether integrated is sufficient for your application or if you need to use a discrete op amp. And oh, I'm sorry, Leah, go ahead. Um, and um, it looks like we don't have any more questions right now, um, but go ahead, Russ. All right, so I, I was just going to point out, we did an episode, if my memory serves correct, uh, and you here in the studio can remind me, back in season five, we did a whole episode on uh, analog specs in, uh, in microcontrollers, and you know, when, to use, when to use the analog in a microcontroller, when you might want to consider using discrete. So there's uh, a reason to go back into the archives that supplements what we've been talking about today. Uh, great information back there as well. So I think uh, any other thoughts, any other uh, uh, things you'd like to say about the 8-bit space? It, uh, it's dynamic, it's growing. 8-bit is stronger than ever. Uh, and as we get, uh, as our array of uh, analog peripherals continues to grow and we're able to integrate that with our digital peripherals, I don't think we're going to see the end of 8-bit anytime right, soon. Right. Too, too cost effective, uh, just too, too functional, too important. And, uh, you know, it, as I said at the outset, the, the rumors of its uh, passing are wildly overstated. Mm -hmm. So, with that, we come to the end of episode one of season seven. Uh, glad to have everybody back with us. Thank you, Ross, for joining us. Thanks, Ross. Uh, thanks, Aaliyah, for your, uh, for your maiden voyage on, uh, on Coffee Break. Uh, welcome to the team. I, I'm sure you'll, you'll enjoy your time and, uh, and, and grow with the, uh, with, the, with the program. Sean, thanks for everything. David, Claudia out there, thanks so much for everything to keep us uh, all on the straight and narrow and getting these, uh, these uh, shows produced. We will be back in two weeks to talk about cellular IoT, I believe. Uh, probably won't be me. Hopefully it'll be your regular host back, uh, unless he's trapped somewhere and can't get back. But uh, we'll see when that happens. So look to for you next time. Uh, until then, uh, stay happy, stay healthy, stay curious, and we look forward to seeing you again. Thanks very much.